Right, let's talk combos. Hey everyone, I'm Clue, and welcome back to some more Flesh and Blood discussion here on Talishare. So we are, we're showing off a, a pseudo combo, right? Okay, I've touched on it before, but what I really want to go over is basically what's sort of left to sort of carve a pathway for combo in its current iteration, aside from anything LSS decides to directly print. So for instance, if we get another hero like Kano that is literally just designed for combo, that's one thing, but we're irrespective of that for everyone else, right? Everything, all the, all the videos that I've done looking for combos for certain heroes has generally been set up through a lot of generic cards, right? The, the toolkit available to everyone that allowed me to get X amount of cards in my hand, right? They're all gone, right? cash has gone, Tome's gone, Art of War's gone, all, again, uncontested card advantage is gone. But what is left? So we have the items from Everfest. And I my, my hope is from the course correction that LSS is making, that we get to the point where the meta does slow down and items become a lot more relevant, because currently you gotta take the turn to set up, right? And then utilize it in the future, and usually a lot of them have heavy constraints, for instance, angle of absurdness, right? You have to have four cards in hand, meaning you'd have to most likely come into your turn not blocking anything and having a card in the arsenal, which is a situation that really isn't gonna happen that often. Amulet of Ignition has to be the first thing you do. Nice thing about Amulet of Ignition though, is you can use it, you can crack it straight away, right? And its effect will obviously last until you actually use an ability. So for instance, playing cards is fine. Doing anything else is fine, you're all right, because its constraint is make sure you haven't played a card or activated an ability, right? You can still play your cards and then activate an ability, be it KO, uh, Mandible Claw or Gold. I'm pretty sure the main gist is right, anything on board counts as an ability. So we can just set that up and leave it. But generally speaking, all, all the items, again, have a, a setup requirement that's significantly greater than what was taken out of the game. And simply put, the meta is just not slow enough. Even if they can lead to very explosive turns, like we're gonna show off today, but they're just, it's not quite enough just yet for combo. In any situation where I think these are somewhat relevant to play, it's in heroes that are uh, are gonna use them as a win more condition, right? They're not gonna use them as combo, they're not gonna play fatigue, they're not gonna try and set up a, a perfect board state to then unleash something like this, right? Anyway, let's let's have some fun with KO as we discuss a little bit further. So it's just blood rush into a whole bunch of stuff, right? So let's just see, you know, how much damage we can we can explosively push. Because again, oh I actually have it open, right? That was the extreme offensive overlap that LSS wants to cut out. Again, still possible, just unrealistic in terms of setup in comparison to, to Tome or Cash In or Art of War, right? But nonetheless, we can start with a Blood Rush Bellow. And from that, we can pitch the Reincarnate. It's obviously going to hit a Beast Within. We will take the action point from the Bean Tractors as well. It's fantastic. Uh, I should have set this up right. Yeah, there we go, Savage Beatdown. KO generates Might, it's not gonna come into play. Gets another Blood Rush Bellow. Uh, tempted to play it, right? Obviously we want it to hit the beast within, which means we probably want to play through the Savage Beatdowns first, even though this is gonna be a plus two. We're using Blood Rush Bellow as more of a, a draw engine, right? For the sake of consistency, you would definitely play the cards first, then use Blood Rush Bellow, right? Plus we do have draw, right? Again, energy potion and gold is equivalent to cash in, just with the, the stand-up lag of an energy potion, right? It has to be the one of the last things you do on your turn. It's a dead card in hand otherwise, and well, once it's on board, then it's it's a, a lot, it's a kind of simpler to use, in my opinion. But we can Savage Sash here, pass, and we also have like Amulets of Absurdness, which will come in handy, right? We can play one Savage Beatdown and use the Amulet of Absurdness. I can't remember how I stacked this deck though. I feel like I did not do it correctly to utilize Amulets of Absurdness. So I think we'll wait on that, but we will. We will Savage Beatdown since we have the resources left, right? Well, no, you know what? We'll, we'll risk it. We'll just Blood Rush Bell. We'll try and high roll. We didn't. That's fine. All right? Into another one. Into Reincarnate. Whatever. We'll end up discarding the, the Beast Within at some point, right? Let's stack up our hand. So we go Gold. Again, crack the energy Potions, which I also <laughs> did in the wrong order. Let's just burn through them. All right? Two resources. Two resources. Two resources. And then we can grab our three extra cards from our pseudo cash-ins, right? From that, we can then go Command and Conquer, and everything else we're gonna play doesn't break the chain. We don't have a blue, but we do have a red. That's good enough, right? We use the gold, pitch the Savage Beat down, float the resources, and then from there, now we can go into 
hopefully a nice long chain, right? So Command and Conquer, we have Fisticuffs along with the Talisman of Featherfoot, right? To give a, a card, go again. So there's still, again, a nice conjunction of items if you're going to downgrade. That's it's probably not worth it because Legendary Equipment is, again, so much higher tiered than everything else that is available, but it's, it's still useful in the sake of combo. But we can Amulet of Servedness here, right? Gained three cards, which is more card advantage in a very easy, uncontested way. Rising speed, rising speed. I mean, at least they've got again a breakneck battery, which is fine. Uh, okay, let's let's just see how much damage we can do, I guess. So Command and Conquer, no defense reactions. We could play the breakneck battery. Uh, we could play the rising speed. We probably want to thin out our hands so that we can end up discarding the Beast Within. Also, not having a red kind of sucks as well. Uh, it has go again. We've drawn a card, so you know we'll just do rising speeds. So rising speed. Pitch any card. It's 11. Pretty decent. Into another one. For another 11. Into... What do we want to cherry pick? You know, we'll do Wild Ride since it's Draw and Discard. We can pitch another Barraging Bighorn. Right. Is it Draw and Discard? It is Draw and Discard, isn't it? Yeah, draw a card, then discard a card. Yeah, we'll do it again. Let's go again. We get another Rising Speed. Well, it really doesn't want us to get rid of the Beast Within. I bet you this doesn't. Well, we have to pitch for it anyway. But I was going to say... Maybe it doesn't land. There we go. A Mudcap Charger. Uh, curious. No, we have to let it resolve first. Then we go Mudcap Charger. Now, this is where we can do Fisticuffs. Unfortunately, this is sort of the end of the road, right? Because we've discarded. It has go again. No, that's the wrong one. It's still. I didn't get to show off the Fisticuffs, but this is still a very lengthy chain of cards, right? It was still an explosive turn doing a lot of damage. Again. You take off the Blood Rush Bellies, sure, a little bit less, even just having the Amulets of Assertiveness. Again, combo still exists. It's just in a very weird place with all the cards that they have removed, right? But we'll leave that there. Almost 100 damage for a burst turn, and I definitely did not play that optimally. It'll show off everything I wanted to show off, but how many attacks did we get off out of curiosity? So if we concede, we end up doing uh, 11 cards, right? For 84 damage. Fairly decent. It does include the uh, three Blood Rush values, right? Yeah. So eight. We did eight attacks. So so, right? But yeah, let's let's talk about this a bit more. So the paths for victory, right? They want players to have strategy and interaction. So at most games, it's generally just a back and forth till someone's reduced to zero, right? Primarily dispense offensive advantage across multiple turns rather than a single burst output. <coughs> Zen ninja, right? which is a kind of a worry because Ninja as a, a class identity was literally built up as burst damage. So I'm curious to see how they circle around back to that. But then here we have the, the interesting one, right? So require combo or one turn kill decks to complete a meaningful, difficult quest to execute their fundamental kill turn. Now, the big, big problem with this, right, is... The, the ambiguity, right, of difficult quest. So, for instance, Zen's OTK, not hard, right? Does require pieces to fall in place, and, you know, I guess that's that's minimizing the RNG more so than the difficult quest aspect. But the examples of Vizari and stacking, say, Rune Chant, uh, or Florian OTK, I've not looked into what the Florian OTK, uh, but Kano, right, as well, completing and memorizing their pitch stack over many turns is, is a curiosity because again, it comes down to how LSS directly shapes combo. And that's a letdown for me because it's either they create a combo specific and then there's, there's nothing inventive, nothing imaginative to do with it. Right. Or they, they heavily develop the toolkits and I don't see that really working because in a game like Flesh and Blood, that's meant to be about utilizing your hand to its its fullest capacity. Having a deck designed around, you know, fatiguing and then having this, this certain setup of cards seems like it defeats the purpose, right? Because is it is it a meaningful OTK? Does it stand true to the new design philosophies and principles they are outlined? So the, the removal of these toolkits from everyone is, again, I said it last time, but I'll say it again, is a bit disappointing to me because they are very much some of the joining cards that are necessary for a lot of 
underdeveloped heroes in the in the sake of combo, right? LSS when they when they do something for a hero when they revisit it, we don't get uh, a, like a set of branching parts, right? We usually get what is missing from their toolkits in relation to the current meta, right? Rather than advancing or introducing something something completely new. So I think combo, unfortunately, is is very much bottom of the barrel, bottom of the list. I, I can see them, again, throwing a bone every now and then with a, a specific hero that is designed to combo. I'm very curious to look up for right now. I've been trying to trying to be a kind of Rosetta, spoiler free. Right, so Florian is basically Vizari, but you have the the delay of it getting to four or more Earth cards in your banish zone to then be able to r significantly ramp up the the amount of Rune Chant tokens you're stacking. And because it's elemental, right, and because it's Earth, uh, it will probably do very well, right, to actually fatigue and then set up the Rune Chant and then again wombo combo your opponent. I mean, it's, it will literally just be twelve plus their health, right? Is how many Rune Chant tokens you'll need with the maximum they could pitch to, to block with Arcane Barrier. So in that sense as well, it's, is that meaningful combo, right? Because it's a race for your opponent, which means that their play style has to kind of fundamentally shift. And it's just, it, it's, it's difficult for me to see how combo will ever pan out in Flesh and Blood, right? Because either it'll be fully endorsed and, right, every now and then a combo will just peak and that, might be seen as a problem, might be seen as fun for a little bit, then LSS has to step in and it's a vicious cycle, right? Or combo becomes something that LSS specifically builds and tweaks and tests. And again, there is not much imagination to be done from my perspective. Again, I like finding goofy card combos. And again, a lot of the, the joining cards have been taken out and probably will be reined in going forward. So yeah. It as a win condition is just an, a real big curiosity to me. So questions, right? What do you think would make combo work, right? Board states, right? Every Everyone, you know, more focus on items, more focus on setup, more permanence, right? We're getting the macros. That, that could be a fun system if they expand upon it. They don't just use it as a, a draft thing. I think macros would also be a perfect design going into PVE, right? And that's a that's another thing we'll we'll talk about probably a bit later. But yeah, so for instance, everything I showed off with KO in in the start of this video, right? They're all things you have to put on board, you have to set up. And again, I personally feel by the time you're going to use them for the sake of combo, it is it is going to a be that offensive overlap that they don't want, right? And it's only and it's also going to be win more because if you're able to again sacrifice life, sacrifice things to set this up you're just going to have an uh, easy time, right? You also have the the issue of it being a 60-card deck, and maybe we see a divide. Blitz gets a, a heavier focus on combo. It's already got pretty much a heavy focus on combo with, again, how short the games are, uh, even whether that's, you know, proper combo or just the sake of, of tempo and, and how aggro every deck is in conjunction with that 20 life point total. But, yeah, combo to me is just in a weird place. And I just don't think it's going to work, right? Because, you know, it's a 60-card random deck. You draw significantly less, even more so than any other card game, right? Getting card advantage is extremely difficult. Cycling through your entire deck is extremely difficult. And, yeah, just it doesn't, doesn't seem like it has a true place in Fab. And it won't. So, yeah. I don't know. What do you think? This is, this is definitely a rambling one. It's more... I was meant to, I was meant to quandary, right? If you, if I were to continue fab content on my channel and continue looking for combos, you know, what would you like to see? Would you like me to, cause I can still set up the hand, right? We showed in the last video that I can still, I can still take, you know, a 16 card hand into any combo I want to build or make, right? Uh, feasibly well, again, through anti potions of gold, through pursuit of knowledge, uh, nourishing emptiness, through all the different ways that you can still generate card advantage that I, that, still do exist in the game or you know with the setups that we we showed off with KO today with again a huge board state that again would have required a, a huge chunk of setup right or i don't know do i do i just go back to blitz and start building decks and playing games
thoughts, opinions. Anyway, how do you feel about combo? Let me know. Hope you enjoy. See ya.